good morning. Welcome, everybody. Happy Monday. Welcome back to Adobe Live. My name is Alexis Bustos, and I am here with the awesome Osama Gopal. Thank Gapal. you. Hi, Alexis. How are you How's doing? doing? Pretty well. I'm pumped. Pumped. I've been excited. I've been waiting for this. So oh, finally, yeah. here we are. <laughs> um, Osama is joining us from the Toronto. Yep. Toronto. Toronto. I hope I'm saying Toronto properly for all you Torontoans. Um, hello, chat. Hello, Tim and Beck and Marissa and Stefan. Welcome for welcome and thanks for joining us today. Um, let's go through the schedule really quick of what happened today and therefore what will be happening happening tomorrow. We had an awesome Adobe Live session um, with Pratik and doing some photo retouching. Um, as well, we have a lot of creative challenges this week, both with Photoshop and XD. I hope you all listened to Peter's and tuned in. We have some cool creative challenges we're gonna go over at the end of the stream. And same thing tomorrow. So let's kick it off. Um, you know, and there's also one more thing happening. We have a cool chat and win today. Absolutely. It's actually, they're, <laughs> we're doing, we're giving away Moo, Moo money, you guys. $30 gift card. $30 <laughs> and we, Come on, they're gonna be awesome. You need business cards? I need business cards. We always need business cards, and Moo is the way I get them. Absolutely, yeah. so, Such high quality. So, chat and win, guys, later. It's Moo today. So without further ado, I wanna get into this awesome bill splitting app with Osama and some really cool design design uh, features with XD. Let's do it. Yeah, absolutely. Hi, everyone. So uh, my name is Osama Gazelle. Uh, some of you may recognize me from the chat, been super active pretty much on everything XD for, for a long time here in the chat, Discord, Slack channel. And um, I'm a UI UX designer and currently teaching UX at Red Academy in Toronto, Ontario. And I'm also a big fan of hats, like in case yes. you haven't noticed. <laughs> nice. And uh, on the side, I also like to edit a lot of photos and uh, videos on my free time. Yeah. So I post yeah. on Instagram, so it's a lot of fun. And um, yep, so on today's agenda, we're actually gonna be uh, quickly defining uh, design systems and uh, style guides. Then we're gonna jump into designing our app, the build splitting app that we are preparing for today, uh, and hopefully finalizing the wireframes before uh, the stream ends. Cool. Right. Bill splitting. Uh, yep. And then we're gonna get lunch app. after and use the app. It's oh yeah, great. oh yeah. <laughs> That'll be, be fun. Won't have to count ever again. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, um, have you used any uh, bill splitting apps before? I, I have. I I mean, sort of. I use Venmo. Um, there's a couple others, but Venmo is kind of the one. Yeah. It's kind of honestly, it kind of comes down to just throw money at people. Right. And I have no idea if I'm actually giving them the right amount. It's well, like here, just take my money. Believe it or not, like I've never used Venmo before. Can you actually split? Money not really, not yeah, really. Just transfer it's not money. A, it's not a bill splitting app. Chat, yeah. what are your bill splitting apps that you guys use? And if you use any, please let us know. Um, then we split wise. I can see one wise. already. Split yeah. wise is the big one. Yep. Yeah, Francisco, thanks. Paco. Thanks, Paco. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. But do you use split wise a lot? Um, I've, been using, I've been using the app lately for almost a month now. And that was kind of the inspiration behind why I decided to ah. work on this app for today. Uh, there are a few things that I believe can be done in a more cohesive way. So right. yeah, let's give it a shot and see what will happen. Yeah, so before we get into that, I just wanted to again uh, define what a design system is because this is pretty much going to be the foundation for what we're working on today. Right. So a design system, um, as you guys may know, is a library of reusable, reusable components that you can uh, utilize across multiple mediums and instead of just having to start from scratch every time you design a new thing you can just get a component or a visual component from that library throw it in your design and you're done right and uh, there are a bunch of things and values that come with uh, building design systems but the things that really stood out to me are scale design consistently so again if you're working across multiple mediums designing for mobile devices computers and desktops uh, you can have an easy and quick access to these components uh, rather than just having to search for them every time you design. Right, right. And the other thing is manage and prototype faster. So once you design and finalize your designs faster, you can get into realness faster and prototype with people and get real evaluation for your products. And the last one and most important one to me is to build in accessibility. So nice. once you 
put yourself in the headspace of building design systems. You're kind of forcing yourself to think about all users, not just a specific group of users. And um, hopefully our design will be accessible for everyone today. I love it. I yep. love it. Giving us the down low on the design systems. Yep, so uh, from that I actually prepared some examples to show you guys. Um, we're going to dive into the ones provided by XDUI Kit, but before that there is actually one of the design systems that really stood out to me by MailChimp. Mm -hmm. um, very cohesive, very informative. They have almost everything you need to know if you want to get samples from their design systems or design library. And the, the good thing I really liked about their library is the snippet of code they have with each component so I that see. they make it even easier for the developers to integrate their visual components and just speed up the development process a little bit. Um, so yeah, it's a great resource for you guys if you want to check it out. It's ux.mailchimp.com. And the other one, of course, is one of my favorite, the UI kits provided by um, Adobe XD. We have a bunch of them. We have the Material Design System Kit, and we also have the um, UI Elements Kit by iOS provided by XD. Uh, really cool um, bunch of options. Pretty much everything you might be looking for you can find here in this kit. And the way to reach out to these kits by going to File, Get UI Kits, and you can find these options listed in here. And if you think that this is at some point generic or something, or it is not enough for you, you can always go to more UI kits and that will take you to the browser and you know, uh, can start working on it. Absolutely. And we've had some really awesome guests before actually build these UI kits. Yeah. So, so you know, if anyone I'm, just takes a, oh. Oh. If anyone wants to take a, oh. Okay. That, Ooh, we just a little fine. glitch in the matrix. And yeah, my computer is shivering. <laughs> All right. Ooh, so, it's about to get crazy. Yep. That was a good sign. That was a that was the universe way of being like. Yeah, that's, uh, let's 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 talk exciting. about things in the chat. Um, let's say hi again to the chat real quick Absolutely. and kind of. Hi know, Tim, how's going, man? Else coming from anyone else streaming from Canada? Oh. Do we have any 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 friends of yours coming in from the chat um, that you've talked to? All right. Hello, D. Um, you know what's great? What is that you actually came from the chat? You've actually come oh, yeah, from this world. Yeah, so that's, you know, Asama, that's, is, Asama is just, has, has been where you've been, you guys. Like he. That's so surreal. Actually, I was telling Alexis yeah. before the stream, um, it was so funny because I personally learned about the chats by mere coincidence, by the whole live stream by mere coincidence. Really? Like literally, I was telling Senna actually when I first met her that my finger slipped, I was going to recommended or for you tab and literally that what exactly happened just my finger slipped and I pressed on the for you tab and um, the live tab on, and, and Behance yeah, yeah on Behance uh -huh. and that's how I learned about it not even from YouTube because a lot of people are coming from YouTube then they discover Behance but it was it's like, like it's like do you believe in fate <laughs> Your finger yeah. slipped. That means there was some some issue with the UI. That um, so what? <laughs> so meta. Yeah, we're back. It is. We're getting meta. Just meant to happen. <laughs> <laughs> meant to happen. Yeah. So I, I love that. Covered. That's how I discovered the live chat, and ever since I just got hooked in it. Like you know, like I got super engaged in it. I was almost on everything XD, Slack, Discord. Uh, I even contributed and yeah. participated in the uh, daily challenge a little bit. Ah, yeah. nice. Yep. Here's what I'm talking about. You know, it's all just one big system, and we're all part of it, you guys. Cornelian says the force is strong with this one. The force is strong. <laughs> this one. This this is Good. the live stream you are looking for. Yeah. Correct. Is one of us. Marisa says yes, I am. Is <laughs> <laughs> one of us. That's so fun. Yeah. Well, awesome. And Asama also teaches. You are also an instructor of oh. sorts. So he. You know, he's the guy to talk to in the live chats if you need any help. Oh, yeah. Um, well, teaching, how can I put that together? So uh, I've been designing mobile applications for a number of years now, and I just moved to Toronto this year. Mm -hmm. I was living in Vancouver, then I moved to Toronto this year, and uh, I got a call from the school where I'm teaching now, and in the beginning they just wanted someone to assist, and now I became in charge with my other co-instructor of the classroom, which was wow. great. Yeah, and it's very, uh, because it's a very enriching experience, I would say, because you're teaching, but you're also learning. Mm. Like when we first got into design, we were, yeah, we were talking. <laughs> about, good. Yeah, we were talking about that right before the stream. Um, Alexis and I almost got in UX design around the same year, 2012. Yeah. Um, 
I personally didn't know that UX is a role or exists. I didn't even know at this point. I just knew design. I was learning from other people. And now seeing those people or the students are trying to learn UX in a complete different way and approach than how I learned a couple of years ago is definitely adding to your experience. Yes, yeah. absolutely. And it's amazing how much you can how much you learn from just like watching people stream as well, yep, you know? Um, and then being able to kind of share that now, it's, I'm sure that's very full circle for you in, yeah, in so many ways. Yeah, it feels so surreal now because I <laughs> used to be out there behind the chat, behind the screen, or no, like behind my computer, <laughs> okay? So <laughs> yeah, you guys just, in the chat, yeah, just now. keep talking, keep doing the challenges. Yep. This could be you. Awesome. One day. <laughs> well, I'm really excited to hear about like the design system you have in place and kind sure. of your, your process through that. Absolutely. So, as we briefly mentioned, just uh, we define design systems, and uh, one concept that we can definitely inherit from design systems are what we call style tiles or style guides. Mm -hmm. uh, it's like a minimized or a demo version of a completely fleshed out design systems and fits pretty well for um, quick occasions or if you're working on a smaller projects, you can create something like that so you don't really have to spend all your time building an entire design system for a small project. So. Um, that's basically what I created for today's app. So this is going to be our, my color palette, uh, the fonts I'm going to be using, and the uh, font size for each segment. Then we also have the actionable components or things that require a direct interaction from the user's end. Mm -hmm. uh, things like icons, buttons, cards, and the last one is more for my reference. Uh, the vertical key lines, things that I'm going to be using to section and structure the safe space where I'm going to be placing all my visual components. Mm. Um, and yeah, that's what I prepare for that's today's great. app. Yep. So, you, know, you have all of these, it's almost like you have all of your ingredients and they're, they're like the cream of the crop, right? That, yep. that, that you know, exactly what you want it to be and, and it's, you can perfect it, you know. Some people make their design systems and really spend a long time kind of going through this. How can you kind of bring us through your 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 process of making and choosing these colors and you know because you haven't created your app necessarily yet but you're going through different ideas. Over yep. Like and, multiple iterations mm -hmm. until you come up with something that can be said an app or design. Yeah. Um, and the funny thing that everything here I quite inherited from the UI kits provided in XD like I didn't reinvent the wheel or anything. Right. I just tried to look up other UI kits and see what can fit and what cannot fit my app. Then I started inheriting from those and that's how I came up with this one. Got it. Yep. Uh, Cornelian asks about the color palette. He says it's nice. And are you representing three tints of each color? Um, a little bit, yes, that is true. I'm using primary color palette, and from that I inherited the same grade or a, just a different shade from the same color to use as a secondary color, play, color palette. So I don't have to um, recreate the color palette all from the scratch or use multiple color palettes that may not uh, fit the overall environment I'm creating in my app. Right. Yep. Um, Cartier says, design systems seem a little overwhelming to put together. Can they be overwhelming? Uh, they, are. <laughs> they are. There you go. <laughs> they are. So, but, I mean, that's, that's why it's really uh, useful to also know and get yourself familiar with style guides or style tiles, as some people like to mm -hmm. uh, name. Um, because it's a very demo version, it's really quick and snappy to put together, yeah. rather than spending, you know, extensive amount of time working on a huge design systems that you're not necessarily needing for this specific project. Right. So, but yeah, like as a process, it takes some time for it takes sure. Takes some time, yeah, yeah, to kind of recognize patterns and what works together, you know, yep. going from, I like how you segmented primary and secondary kind of colors and, you know, maybe those are colors that he's worked with before or maybe I you've did, seen, sure. exactly, yeah. you've, you've seen that work. Um, and the same can be said with typography, you know, there are, you don't want to reinvent the wheel. I love that you said that because it's, you know, you don't have to. Yeah, like, So much stuff has been made for you in, in a way. Yep, I like, um, I always say this, in order to build something innovative, you don't have to, you're not necessarily wanting to radically change everything people know. You uh, can just add like a small features here and there that makes it more innovative, but convenient in the same time. Yeah. Yeah, yeah awesome. And yeah. we have the chat and win countdown. Chat yeah. and win, oh yeah, yeah it's up. For, uh, 14 <laughs> minutes, you guys. Um, I saw in the chat earlier someone said more, more moo, more money, more moo, more moo, more problem, something like that. Oh, that's was, hard to it say. It was <laughs> fun. It was good though. Um, I remembered it. Um, yeah, some moo, some awesome moo, um, moo cards. Yep. For business cards. 
I love them. I think everybody who has a Moo card always, like their business card game is like upped. That is for like sure. It's really well printed and nice stock, so. It's like you're trying to stylize everything you're doing in your yes. life other than just designing. <laughs> yes. So, yeah. So, um, yep. Here is, this is our uh, design canvas. Uh, we're gonna be designing the app where all the magic happens. Uh, nice. <laughs> yeah, Bill is planning app. Chat and win. Oh yeah, Tim is saying, oh yeah, chat and win is real. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, and Danning said, your future self and teammates will thank you for putting this together. Speaking in regards to the actual design system. Yeah. Yes, so, yes. Yeah, so it is, is a lot of work, but we're gonna, we're gonna we're gonna keep referring back to it as yeah. you design and kind of see how it kind of came together too. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. All right, so before we actually start designing the app, I want you guys to meet Tiffany, our persona for today. Nice. Hi, Tiffany. Uh, so, um, Tiffany is a working millennial in Toronto. She lives in Toronto and she loves to travel to New York to try different cuisines and places, recreational visits in general, but she comes across the same pain point that sounds very relatable to everyone here in the chat. Mm. And you guys let us know if you ever suffer from that before. Um, you hang out like you have a nice time with people and friends and when once the receipt comes, everyone starts resorting back to their phones to calculate what they should and shouldn't pay, right. which is a little bit embarrassing and in my opinion, not the perfect way to end the night, right? <laughs> So, uh, ever happened to you guys before? It really, it really does ruin the vibe of a dinner. Yeah. When you're out with friends and it's like such a small thing. But wait, yeah. this is great. Let's go to the next place. Um, who <laughs> did I owe money to? Yeah. I'm so sorry. Did I not give you enough? It's, it's awkward. It, yeah, it is awkward and embarrassing sometimes. Um, so yeah, that's basically why um, we decided to design this app today and. From this, we have a couple of motivations and frustrations that we can use to talk about the features we are going to build for our app. So first of all, the build info, this is gonna be the master feature. So here's actually one of the things that I prefer to have in my designs. Like whenever you have a feature that is gonna perfectly represent the app, try to make it the master feature. Everything else is an ecosystem around this feature. Interesting. So the app is, to split bills, so just keep it that way. Everything else is complimentary, mm. I would say. Uh, then try not to overwhelm with features. Absolutely. Yeah. Stay and focused on what you're, what you're trying to express to maybe yep. your company or your your team yep. or as the project itself. So it's I like, like that it's like if you have a diagram like x axis and y axis, yeah. the master feature is the anchor point, and everything else is just surrounding. Got it. Uh, then. That's the, it. The second feature we're going to be working on is groups. Um, you know, a feature to let you create groups with people you hang out with or you uh, you know that you will be around oftentimes, so it becomes easier to split wisely with, with each other. And the last one is to split, and we're going to have a little trick in there just to um, help people split in a better and more seamless way. And let me guys know in the chat, like, yeah. what are the problems you face when you split bills? Yeah. yeah. There are some pain points uh, everyone comes across when splitting a bill. Yeah, split evenly, unevenly. Oh, yeah. I feel like they're always uneven. <laughs> I feel like you're paying to just have friends at that point. Yeah, you know what I mean? Just yeah. to keep your group of friends close yeah. to you. It's like, you know what? I know I just got a salad, but I'm going to give you five bucks because I know it's probably a whole thing. Yep. If I don't give you enough, you're not going to be my friend. You know, maybe I will so never just, lose friends for money. <laughs> yeah, like a <laughs> service charge of keeping friends. And that's, yep. Maybe that's what it, we should call it. But, Absolutely. Um, yeah, Tim yeah. says uh, you can't even full screen the prototype window. Absolutely, Tim, I'll do. <laughs> yes. Just I forgot about it. Thanks, man. There you go. Earn yeah. the bills. Itemized. Also, earn the bills. So it's yeah. talking about uh, separate checks. Just separate. get separate checks. Which is... Totally. But what if you're with like seven people or ten people? It's awful for servers and to do separate checks. I don't know um, if you're a big fan of traveling, Alexis. I like you travel this. a lot. So I travel a lot. And believe me, ordering separate checks isn't good in some cultures. Uh, isn't that cool thing? Yes. So, so Yeah. Not yeah. only is it annoying, it's like not cool yeah. culturally. Yeah. Um, yeah, you're And right. it was like really embarrassing. So that was one of the key factors why I decided to think about this app because it happened to me a lot because I'm living here in North America like 
between Canada and the U.S., it's a pretty familiar thing for everyone to order separate checks. But in some countries, it's a little bit Tabby. annoying. Yes. Annoying. Yeah. Yeah. Think of it from the server's perspective. It's a lot of a lot of shuffling, yeah. a lot of work. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Some people's right. but uh, Santaj says friendship tax. <laughs> exactly. Oh, Just think wow. of it that way. But hopefully with this app, we won't have to worry about yep. that friendship tax being too high. <laughs> so this one is for you, Tim, full screen. So this is the tree uh, for my app. This is just a rough uh, UX flow, how things are going to happen. So this is the landing page or the master page, as I like to call, where you can split or enter the bill information. Mm -hmm. Then you can, from there, go to uh, whether existing groups, uh, choose one of the existing groups to split the bill with, or just go to um, finalize the process and actually split uh, at taxes or just shuffle between the friends or add new friends to your groups if you want. Um, it's pretty simple. It's going to be like two or three actions most to navigate through the entire app. So just keep it as minimal as possible, but useful mm -hmm. and functional for sure. That's great. That's great. That was a great design map, actually. Can we oh. kind of go back to that? Yeah, and sure. Kind of Thank you. Um, I don't know about you guys, but I think this is a very well-designed understanding of kind of like how the app's going to work, right? There's no screens here. It's just yeah. actions or, yeah. So can you talk us through kind of like why you think, why this is an important part of your process or, or to have? Yeah, uh, the most important thing for me at this point is not getting distracted with any aesthetics or mm. visual components. I just want to focus mainly on the functionality on a functionality and how things are going to interact with one another. Mm. Um, w once you start getting into using artboards and all the magnificent features we have, whether in XD or even other uh, design softwares, so it becomes a little bit distracting. You, you start considering every single pixel and you want to perfect everything. Uh, at this point, I don't want to focus on that. I just want to focus on the contents yeah. and what's going to be included in the app. Uh, so that's basically why I'm I created this. This is actually a website that I'm using for uh, oh. maps. Yeah. Oh, wow. What's it? It's called Coggle, like Coggle, C O G G L. Coggle it, dot it? Yeah, this one. Oh, there we go. Yeah. Nice. Very cool. It's yeah, like very a flow, cool. Yeah. Flow chart. So it's a great tool to use if you want to stay nuts, don't want to get too distracted while you're creating and want to do it kind of more more high fidelity too. It's it's really nice looking. You can like post Yeah, that. it's actually for a flow, it's really for nice flow, looking. For a flow, it's pretty yeah. organized. Yeah. Um, so yeah, ta coggle.it. Coggle.it, yes. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Uh, Munir asks, how do you set a deadline for a project you're working on? As we're in the as we're in the thick of kind of talking over project flows, that's a great, yeah, great it, question to ask. That is definitely uh, difficult to ask because yeah. it always comes back to uh, the client or the company you're working for because uh, you have higher or upper management who set up the deadlines for everything you're working on and they take really good care of how teams are collaborating with one another. Mm. So based on all this, they can set a deadline and again, you're having a conversation with the upper management and other teams uh, every day. It's not like you're working in silo mode. Yeah. You have to talk to uh, people and teammates just to set up things correctly and uh, don't exaggerate or don't be super optimistic, but don't also underestimate what you can accomplish mm. in a certain amount of time. Uh, but for example, where I teach at Red Academy, we have a set de deadline three weeks for each project. Okay. Yeah, so it's a pretty intense kind of program, but it provides enough learning experience for the students and train them on how to deal with short deadlines for sure. Yeah. yeah. You know, that's the thing is that understanding your workflow and like what you can accomplish in a certain amount of time is very, very important as a designer who's working in house or as a freelancer. Um, and that's just kind of that's just you learning. Yep. Right. And yeah. so setting your own setting your own deadlines, you know, is a great way to start. Absolutely. And I think shorter is better. Shorter. I, I, th <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I sure. think the shorter the deadline, the better. I think the better the work sometimes. Like, you know, you can work forever on something, but if you give yourself a narrow window of time and, and good time to focus on and it. And focus on this, yes. You can, you can yeah. solve some amazing problems quickly. Yep. So um, it just depends, I guess, when you're... <laughs> All right, awesome. Yeah. All right, so now the first step before I start designing, I'm going to be linking my assets from the style tile that I created. So to link the assets, you go to the plus icon over here, choose the 
document from the cloud. You have to save your document to the cloud first before linking the assets. And here it goes. I have everything nice. I need to start working on. So that's on. from the other document you yes, actually had. from this one. Mm. Basically, that's everything I created in here. All right. So, okay. yep, I think we are in good shape to start the app now, right? Nice. And please, guys, if you have any ideas in the chat, like if you need any features other than the three features I'm focusing on, feel free to uh, suggest that. Keep them coming. <laughs> yeah, definitely. And as Osama starts um, working on the sure. on the app, you know we have the chat and win happening in about three four minutes. So you guys keep staying in the chat, talk to us, let us know what's up, how are you doing, where you're coming from. Um, what your pain points have been for um, splitting meals, splitting, splitting checks, because you know that's the focus of today's app. Um, uh, Cartier says restrictions and short deadlines sometimes equal magic. Yes. Mm -hmm. Agreed. Yep. Fully, fully agreed. Mm -hmm. And is there a section for the tip? That's a good question as well. Oh, yeah, we will see that. We'll see about that. Oh. Who said that? Cartier. Yeah, I think there's uh, Cartier. Sure. Yeah. yeah. People just asking about the tip. Always yeah. remember the tip. Always remember the tip. <laughs> if you're gonna go out to eat, yep. although some places culturally, they don't accept they don't that. Do yep. the tip. Yep. So how do you work those out? All oh, right. Yeah, that's hard. I don't think I've ever been in a place where I've I've messed I've messed up. You know, like messed up giving giving a tip and not giving a tip. Oh, I always I, feel like I do a lot of research to, oh. to make sure I don't. I honestly. <laughs> I fell for it a couple times before. Oh, that. man, where has where that happened? Uh, happened to me in Europe. Europe. Yeah. Classic. <laughs> yeah. Some so, places it's just not a thing to give a tip. You just, uh, people are paid. I almost well. got kicked out of the restaurant, so I don't Because, because you tipped? <laughs> because I was trying to tip. Oh, yeah, my Yeah, it was like, turned out, turned out like very, um, like a rude thing in their culture somehow. I'm Whoa. definitely not gonna name the country or anything that just happened to me in Europe. So they're like, no, we will not accept your tip. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So now I'm actually working on a home screen where the um, splitting function or the bill info uh, creation is gonna live. Cool. I like this kind of. Um Kind of like side tab yep. vibe you're having. Stone says that's your favorite place, tip well. Favorite place, tip well. Yeah, yep. always. Always tip well. Um, Stefan says make the app adopt based on region settings or just make the tip, tip optional. Tip. tip option, yeah. Um, yeah, I like the that's regional setting. I like that. Uh, I feel like a lot of people are on the same page with what I created and prepared already. So yeah, yeah that's a great one. Thank you. Yeah, that's a cool idea. Maybe, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, maybe practice it. Maybe make your own. Yep. Make your own kind of app based on that. That's a great idea to kind of just elaborate on. For any for travelers, maybe it's integrated with an already existing travel app. It's a cool feature mm -hmm. idea. All right, we're almost to chat and win, you guys. We're about almost, almost 40 seconds out. What should we chat about today? Let's chat about uh, plus best restaurant you maybe you've eaten at or the... Huh. Highest tip. Oh. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> I would just chat about uh, if anyone's ever been a waiter or a server, you know, best best tip story. Best yeah, story about, about a tip that you got or you didn't get or maybe one that you gave. We're talking about tipping your waiter here. So let's chat about that for a bit. Um, we're at 10 seconds and keep chatting, you guys, because we're going to we're gonna be winning $30 gift cards to Moo.com, and that's pretty awesome. So we'll see you in a bit. <clears throat> Hey. Hi. Welcome Chat back to time. Chat and Win. We are here. We are talking about tips and tip culture and are you tipping properly and have you ever not gotten a tip if you worked at a restaurant? We're talking about that. Let's uh, see. We're talking about Moo. 
Moo, moo cards. Moo cards are, have, are the best. Did you have you ever used Moo for a? Yeah, that's a funny story and kind of painful because I got my Moo cards last year and I got my entire bag stolen in Vancouver. Oh no! <laughs> so yeah. It's because you didn't tip. Yeah, it's kind of painful. Everyone looks like we have some people who used to work as servers. Moo Moo. Awesome. Yeah, yeah I I've gotten fire. some pretty cool cool cards other places, and I thought they were cool. And I, oh, Stefan won. Stefan. All right. Well, thirty dollar gift card to Moo. Congrats. <laughs> Congratulations, everyone else. You have still won with the code Adobe Live or with the with the URL with Adobe Live. Fifteen percent off your next Moo order. Fifteen percent. So everybody, go get your business cards and let's all get jobs. <laughs> that that would be nice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Some great quality cards, though. I thought mine were good, and then I saw a Moo card, and I was like, wow, I should have gone with Moo. Actually, one of the cards uh, I, I saw before and really uh, drew my attention was like a ring. Mm. Well, yeah, so you actually upload all your information. It's like a smart ring. You upload what? all your information on it, and once you hover over like a device or something, everything just gets into the device. Yeah, I've seen it on YouTube, and they're so active on Instagram. <laughs> Whoa, so I this is like the new business card. Yeah, oh. like, yeah. If you want to be like a showstopper kind of person in an Jeez. event or something, yeah. Wow, the gift card, the uh, business card's not, not good enough, folks. I've had, I've seen some pretty cool ones. Um, actually, a guest on Adobe Live gave me a great business card um, with his pin attached. I think you guys know who it is. <laughs> but it was, um, it was, it was so cool and. I got one that was like just um, a R two D two like like image on the card, and that was like it. Oh, that's so nice. So it was like a cool piece of art yeah. too that I like kept on my desk, and I was like, oh yeah, who designer is that? Flipped it over. That's pretty cool. Statement piece. <laughs> cool. Right. So we got so. a calculator looking vibe on the screen right now. Munir says, I give tips when I'm in a good mood. Ooh. Rocking the boat. Rocking the boat. <laughs> Some say, I always give a tip. 20%. That's, 20%. What, that's what it should have been. Like, what percent yeah. <laughs> tip does everybody yeah. give? What percent? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So back in high school, that was like one of the most awkward situations. Splitting a tip. Yeah. Splitting. I mean, splitting the bill. Splitting the bill for sure. Yeah, it's hard. It's hard when you're a when you're a student trying to split bills, and that's yeah. when you do it the most. You yep. know. Yeah. It's just, you're just trying yeah. to share food and just get fed. Yep. Um, we've all encountered that. It would be cool if there was like a splitting the bill, like loan system for students. You know what I mean? Like. Whoa, that would be a smart one. You know, yeah. That should have been my app today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's fine. When you, because when you need to split it, it's uh, it's that's when you maybe are the most yeah. hard pressed. Um, I find myself now that I like, can pay for things now that I'm not in school. I, I just like don't even care as much. I don't even notice how much I get back. Oh. From people, and I'm like, yeah, yeah, just, just throw me like ten bucks, fifteen bucks, or yeah, uh, buy me pizza sometimes. Exactly, yeah, like, <laughs> exactly. I think that would be a fun concept. Of, yep. Like instead of uh, splitting the bill, it's like I got your next meal. I you got your next meal on me. Oh, so you owe me a meal? Owe oh, me meal. Say, yeah. yeah. Okay, that would be a nice one. That would be a fun <clears> one. <throat> We're coming up with great app ideas, you guys. See, that's actually one of the things that I really like about the chat. Like, people start throwing ideas, and some of them are really valid ideas. Like, you can literally build an entire app off of it. So yeah, well, yeah. there's some great minds in the chat. Like, Absolutely. Some great, and you know, I'm sure a lot of people that are watching also aren't. Some people aren't chatting, and I know you have this like really good idea that you want to share with us right now, and you're not doing it. And I know, I just, I just know it's really good. Mm -hmm. You know, um, it's all about the group mind, group, group think. Yep. Speaking team environments. Speaking of team environments, yeah. yes. How do you feel about it? A team environment. Yeah. I I was my formal education with UX was all about working with people. Okay. You know, yeah. So I I think I ex I excelled, or I think our teams excelled when we learned how to work well with each other. It's a hard skill to learn. Absolutely. Tell me about it. Yeah. 
And that's actually one integral part of the entire learning experience we have at Red Academy. Like we try to also make them practice teamwork. It's not just about designing a bunch of screens and getting feedback. It's more than that a little bit. Because when you graduate and go out there, hunt for jobs, people will start evaluate your skills based on how good you are working with a team, so. Absolutely, yeah. And that's what we're doing, you know, here even with the chat. You guys yep. are essentially a team, and if you're doing the creative challenge with us every day, <clears throat> head over to Discord and talk with your, these are your teammates, mm -hmm. essentially. Yep. You're, you're looking over each other's work, you're critiquing each other, um, you're giving each other, giving us ideas in the chat. Tons of them, Give, yeah. give each other ideas. Everyone's talking about tips now, and I love that. I kind of love that the chat is on fire of talking about how much to tip people. Oh, build this place. It's great. <laughs> It'll like, at 15, 20. Yeah, we'll see about that, Marissa. Oh, I love this idea. Everyone puts five bucks into an account every two weeks and yeah. everyone eats together once a month. I love that idea. It's kind of like a new age potluck system. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, That's so. a great idea. Adobe community is magic, yeah. I think it's all about how you can access other designers and, and learn how to work with them. Everyone's different, because everyone yeah. has a different style. Oh, of for working sure. and, and it's and there is a point where everyone will start being like super subjective about what mm. they like most but which is fine absolutely i just have to compromise that with teamwork again like so yeah. there's a lot of people who say designers aren't artists like ux de designers aren't artists what mm. do you think about that because sure, in design you design great, for people that's a great question yeah. chat you know weigh in on this do you consider UX design designers artists? I am, um, I've had a lot of thoughts about this. I'd love to hear what the chat has to say though. I would say we're a form of artists. I think everybody though is an artist. Yeah. <laughs> to be fair, I'm one of those people who's like, everyone's an artist. <laughs> um, yeah, I think there's a, there's a great deal of artistry that goes into designing, period. Mm -hmm. And there's been some really amazing um, UX work coming out of the world, and Behance specifically. Yep. Um, that is that is art. That is truly art. Maybe some of them not as plausible. Yep. Oh, wow. Well, not every single idea will come to fruition. Uh, sometimes yeah. it's just really nice to put it out there and let other people learn from it. Uh, Simona says, UX, no, UI, yes. Even Interesting. UI, okay. Tim says he's 40% artist, 50% engineer, engineer, and 10% magician. Oh, wow. Yes. Juicy. <laughs> but how, what's your percentage of, percentage of musician? Musician? Okay. <laughs> I don't know. I think everyone's also a musician. Um, UX is very multidisciplinary. Exactly. So you're coming, UX is a, it's, everybody's coming into it with different strengths and maybe they're already artists or designers in another, another space mm -hmm. um, in a different type of work even. And so they're bringing, everyone's bringing different things to UX. So I would say, I would say yes. People, UX designers can be labeled as artists, artists in a way, in a way. <laughs> I would definitely agree with you. That's my own personal opinion because at the end of the day, yes, you're not reinventing the wheel, but you're trying to add a, uh, let's call it a flavor to work. Like you're trying to go a little bit innovative, um, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Add value to the community, basically. That's what I'm trying to say. Mm. Yeah, it's a good question. It's a great question about about if UX is art, considered consider art, US, UX designers. Yeah, I think, yeah, I think everyone has a lot to bring to into the the field. Yep. I don't think it's yep. I don't think it's you're just a designer when you're a UX designer. You're a lot of different things. I think everybody can agree to that. Yeah, and uh, who said UI yes, UX is no? Um, yeah, that's that, uh, that someone really said that. Yeah, I would slightly agree and disagree with that because um, UI and big part of it is like con depends mostly on contingent thinking. So. Uh, you have to build this kind of analytical mindset to evaluate things in a logical way, how things will work together, it's like a puzzle. So um, not completely art as well, I would say. I mean, it's, it's definitely, it definitely, in my opinion, has like a strong 
artistic part of it, but not entirely. Got so. it. Yeah. Stone says tipping is an art. <laughs> and I would agree with you 100% uh, on that. Yeah. Let's, uh, Santaj says, design is generally always closely intertwined with art, although obviously designing for a purpose if much different to, is much different to making a piece of art. Yep. Yes, that absolutely. Sounds, yeah. When you're creating art, you're creating art. Yep. You don't have you know, to explain it. You're not doing it. it. You yeah. don't have to explain it, no. But there's so much artistry in design that so much of it overlaps into it and some of those values and, and how you consider yourself and how you work and how your fl what your flow is can overlap. But when you're creating for somebody, when you're designing for a human. Yep, that's the point. You have to consider other yeah. mindsets. Are you an artist at that point? Yeah. You're doing, you're, some, you're doing something good. <laughs> so, so no worries, everyone's doing the good work. <clears throat> right, now I almost finished the first screen, the home screen, where you actually start entering the bill information. Then now I'm jumping into the second one where uh, like in the normal flow, you will go from that trying to select a certain group of friends to um, split with. That's what I'm trying to do here. Got it. So you have the, the different uh, multi-select of bill, tax, tip. Mm -hmm. Great. So we're kind of getting a rough idea over like this first initial screen is going to be where you where you input. Yeah. Um, it's great. <laughs> and it's not too far away from like what we know, yeah. a calculator image or a number inputting field to be. Yeah, I mean, one it's not of reinventing the, the calculator. <laughs> yeah, but again, like, uh, yeah, that's actually, thank you for saying this word calculator because uh, some people when I started working on that, like, because like a few weeks ago, I started posting um, shots on Dribble, Behance, Twitter, everywhere, and some people are like, oh, uh, why we can't just add or subtract amounts because I'm not creating a calculator. I am creating a split functionality. So it's going to be different, but once the entire flow is completed, we can get a better sense of how it works. Yeah. And if anyone's just joining the chat, we're here with Osama Ghazal, and he is creating a bill splitting app. And so we've talked a lot in the chat around like <laughs> tip. <laughs> we've talked a lot about tips, yeah. today, which <laughs> I love. Um, and also specifically the, the, U, the actual design system that he's using. And he's imported assets over into this, um, this window of XD from a separate window where he's created the, the system altogether. Yep. So he's kind of a pro. <laughs> thank you, <laughs> I appreciate that. <laughs> yes, oh, thank you, Tim. Yes, Manir, my name is Alexis. It's nice to meet you, if we haven't met before. <laughs> um, uh, Stefan, I like what you're saying around though art is created to communicate an idea, though art is created to communicate an idea, so is UX. So there's also this idea around communicating your idea. Yeah, but in UX, um, yeah, I'll piggyback a little bit off that and say that in UX, you're trying to go further and solve the problem, not just communicate the idea, because uh, you're communicating the idea for sure. That's an integral part of it, but you're also trying to address a certain problem statement and provide a comprehensive solution for that problem statement. Yes. So, but definitely true. Marissa, I'll just give you a little background on me. I think people are asking who I am. My name is Alexis. I'm a host at Adobe here at Adobe Live. I'm actually a UX designer at a design firm, not at Adobe. Um, but yeah, and that's but it's cool. <laughs> no, not all, the not all the hosts work for Adobe. So how long have you been uh, doing design, Alexis? I've been doing design for a while. I started as a graphic designer, much like I'm sure a lot of people in the chat. started as graphic design back in 2008. Worked as a photographer for a bit. Whoa. Yeah. What kind of photography? Commercial. That's awesome. Yeah. But I really, yeah, I think I really, my art, my art behind photography was definitely around portraits and Love doing that, but didn't want it to be my lifeblood. Yeah. yeah. So are you? So I do it for fun now. So then from there I went to visual design. I feel like here's the thing: when I tell my story, a lot of people are like, "Me too." Yeah. You know, like I was a photographer too, or I was a graphic designer too. Um, and then eventually went back to school for interactive design, and became a UX designer. But isn't that funny, like almost all designers, they have like a site gig or like something on the side that they prefer to 
uh, practice other than designing. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, like, so. Absolutely. Yours is, yours is like photo manipulation. Photo yours manipulation and video editing, yeah. Video editing, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah everyone has to, everyone has different, different fun things they do on the side. To kind of keep, I was talking to another guest about it. It's a way to keep your mind Fresh. creative yep. as well, yep. you know? It's, it's important to kind of come off the screen a little bit and and work with the world around you and work in a creative field, a creative endeavor around you in the world. Yep. And photography is a great one, viewing through a lens. It's um, like the best way to flex this creative muscle a little bit and get out of like your daily routine and try to come up with something new. Yeah. Yeah, because if you think about it, as UX designers, a lot of our products are being used, you know, yes, they're on screens, but like like this tip app, this um, little bill splitting app, yep. tip app. Um, <laughs> The people are going to be using at a restaurant, at loud, crazy restaurants, or maybe waiting on the side of the road, waiting for their lift. Like, it's important to immerse yourself into into the real spaces that your app's going to be used in. You know, so yeah. when you're testing it, so say you know down the line with this app would be a great, great way to test the flow and function of your app in the space. And uh, yeah, you have to diversify the audience that you're testing with too. Mm -hmm. Just collect as much information as possible. Yeah. Oh, people are talking about all their different things. So Cornelian says organic gardening is, is a good pastime. Is the is is maybe their um, creative pastime? Yeah. Amazing gardening is absolutely huh. a great yeah. way to kind of like unwind, unwind and get creative. Cap, ha making things grow, making yeah. sure they grow properly. That's and having the organic. That's there's so many challenges there that you have to overcome. Um, culin culinary arts. Is another one? Yeah. So like wow. cooking? Like, yeah, yeah. Cooking. That's, uh, that's, uh, well, that's, that's one of the most creative things you could possibly do. Yeah, every week I try to cook something new and I end up burning the kitchen, so oh, <laughs> I kind of gave up on that. <laughs> hence, the, hence the bill splitting up. Yeah. The one eating you. out. <laughs> yeah. Toronto's supposed to be a great cultural hub for food. Toronto? Yes, it is. Mm -hmm, it's uh, yeah. amazing. And a uh, patio. Do you However, eat out a lot in Toronto? Almost every meal, like I only cook like two things, so, <laughs> so <laughs> I yeah, I end up eating out a lot for sure. Nice. What are the two things you can cook? Uh, steak. Nice. I can cook steak uh, and pasta. Nice. As long as you can do it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Santaj says, but working with your hands is the. Working with your hands is the best way to refresh your brain. True. Agreed. Yeah. Agreed. It's ironic too, because like we're typing on our computer and like, yep. but like if you really think about it, we're just like moving like tiny bits of you ourselves. You need to get into that physical interaction with the objects you're working with. Yeah. Yeah. It's absolutely refreshing. So. Yeah. If only there was a way to kind of like prototype and build UX. Yeah. And like with like your. You know, and uh, maybe like get. VR, maybe throw something on, oh, like wow. throw some yeah. buttons on a screen. I'm sure that's already a thing, if you know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so actually one of the things that, like speaking of refreshing, mm -hmm. repeat grid, oh my god, like thank you, XD, for having this repeat grid oh, feature. Oh, It's, it's like definitely my favorite, you know, I can play with it all day. <clears throat> yeah, oh, and you're, yeah, so you're creating just like contact different list. contact lists, yeah. yeah. Repeat grid. Oh, man, I'm gonna get that tattooed. It's so, <laughs> it's so good. Oh, nice. What name? Yep. And phone number. It's definitely absolutely not the phone number. It's not my real phone number. Yeah. <laughs> Let's do this again. Oh yeah, we're talking about. Marissa says I'm a UX designer for GM, so I don't get it to use a, a lot of creativity since we have a style guide. So listening to Adobe's live is my creative outlet. Oh, uh, nice. Well, we're gonna get real creative for you. <laughs> yeah. We're building it. Bill splitting. We out. are doing it. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, having a that's a great that's a great topic around having a preset style guide. And feeling like, do you get to have any creative outlet with it? Or is it, you know, because that, that would make a big difference for somebody kind of yep. going into their work. You know, they're, maybe they're like, I want to do something more creative than follow a template. But is it really, are you really losing creativity when you have a style guide? 
Um, I would say it, it depends on how you created it in the first place. Mm. Are you just using a style guide? Well, if it's if it's in this case GM, but if it's like a very established style guide, a very established style guide, I think um, I can work with it for sure, but I wouldn't be as comfortable as working with a style guide that I created from scratch. Got it. Okay. Got it. Yeah. Or at least being involved in a creation process of a style guide. Right. Yeah. So there you go. Yeah. Osama is one to be fully. He needs full creative <laughs> creative buy-in. <laughs> uh, nice. Hey, Colby. Colby was a guest not too long ago. Colby. Maybe like Colby. Oh, Colby. Yeah, I remember him. Yeah. He actually, uh, we spoke once on Behance when he was uh, participating in a creative jam, but I don't remember what city. So, but I Colby's definitely recognize. Out of Florida. Florida. Yeah. Um, I, hopefully, Colby, I'm talking about the right me Colby. What city you're out of? Yeah. <laughs> Colby, we need your app. It's uh, there's over here in California. He did a um, he did a um, an app around hurricanes. We need an app like oh, that wow. in California. There's a lot of fires happening here right now. So in California, yeah. There's a lot of um, first responder type things happening in this area. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, so, sorry. There's no, no. fires here. Fires, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I lived in Los Angeles for almost a year, so oh, I'm pretty familiar so you're with it. Yeah. Fires. Yeah. Yep. That time seems, of year. Uh, seems scary. Oh man. Yeah. So the select friends feature is super important for an app where you're sharing a tip or yep. sharing, oh my God, sharing the bill. Sharing the bill. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sharing the bill. It's yeah, because otherwise, who would you be sharing with? Mm, no. uh, Colby says Orlando. Orlando. Yes. Stone says, I hear a bit of Jersey in your inflections. Thank you. <laughs> I love that. And no, I'm not. I have no ties to Jersey. I would love that, though. That's I love that it's a thing. I'm born and raised Californian. So what part of California? Um, the Silicon Valley. Wow. Yes. San Jose, yeah. born and raised, came up amongst the tech, tech boom. Tech boom, yeah. Oh, that's too much. Oh, these are like little indicators. Yeah. Yes. Uh. Oh, awesome. Very cool. Yeah, design style guides are are a very interesting thing. You know, we we talk a lot about them being, you know, how to build them. But what do you do when you have one already in place and you have to use that one? Uh. I'm not going to lie, so I'm going to use them, but I will definitely try to add something here and there. So I'm going to stick to the standards. If I'm working on like a big project or something, I'll, I would definitely have to stick um, to the standards like all the way through, but I can't help it. I will try to add something here and there. Yes. Yeah, it's just like, yes. because uh, otherwise... Uh, it's hard. It's hard to stick to that, Yeah. Um, but also incredibly important of a skill to have. Um, who was saying it was? Um, I think it was Chris. Chris, one of our guests, talked about how having something already established for you doesn't take away from your creativity. It actually allows you to like play more because things look the same. So you, those little minor, right? Yeah, I mean, I can see that, but am I? completely on that opinion as well. I don't think so because no, I, I yeah, really, I don't think you are. I mean, yeah, yeah, I think <laughs> I like to be involved in the process. I mean, as much as possible. It's not like I'm forcing myself again um, to be practical and more of a realist. Whenever I get a new gig or working with a new client and if they have something established, I have to work with it. I can definitely add to that thing here and there. Uh, but what I personally prefer, no, to be involved in the process. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they happen over time. Like you have to be willing to change up your your template every now and then. Yep. Because everything is just. Because everything is just temporary with yeah. with a lot of design, even standards. Yep. You know. Standards. A new piece of technology can come out next year that becomes the most popular, most widely used piece, and they may have a completely different standard of design than what you're used to building with. Um, it was, that was a funny thing we always, we always learned in school, like when you're creating, um, what was it? I had a friend of mine creating a app to, um, it was supposed to work in, I think, in a different country other than the US. And at the time, this country, their number one phone 
wasn't an iPhone. It was like a, um, this is even before like, like Pixel. It was like, it was an Android of some Android that was popular at the time. But all of her screens or his screens were on an iPhone. And it's oh, like, so you're showing okay. this use case of somebody using this app, but it's like, um, I don't think they use iPhones in that region of uh, the world. Yeah. Um, so that's what I'm saying, being, play being playful with your with your designs enough that you can apply different different styles on top of them, right? Yep. It's that's for sure. Yeah, yeah, that's 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 key now. It is key. I'm liking your rounded edges. I think nice. they're fun. Uh, that's one of the super uh, trendy things now, like in individual design when it comes to mobile applications, like having these curvy corners yeah. across all your visual elements approximately, so. Yes, yes it <clears> is. <throat> and the cards themselves as well yeah. are a big trend. Mm. Yeah, it, all, it's, it definitely lets me feel, it makes me feel a little like more, to feel comfortable spending more money, I think. It's, a, you know, <laughs> these curvy edges, something about it. It's very friendly. Very, uh... Cute. Very cute. <laughs> Some people call it cute, actually. It's very cute. Yeah. Yes. But I can promise you guys, like, I'll probably change the entire thing in a couple of weeks from now. Once I feel like incorporated in a new trend or just like coming up oh, with a brand new stuff. So, like, so you go back into your design sometimes and like yeah. change them according to stuff. That's interesting. Yeah, That's absolutely. a good... On past projects, you guys, you could, you know, go back and tweak them. They're never done. Absolutely it's not like, not like you post something on Behance yeah. or on your website and it's done. No, you can go back and change them whenever. It's a good tip for anyone. I should do that. <laughs> so <laughs> what do you feel when you actually look at something you designed six, seven years ago? And oh. <laughs> oh, that's man. a tricky part. What? Yeah. Chat, how do you feel when you look at your designs from like a year or two ago or even three? Six or seven years ago, yeah. I don't look at them. <laughs> Six or seven years <laughs> oh, ago, it's man. like, oh, you child. <laughs> I look at them honestly, and I get super nostalgic. I know they're not good oh, at all. Oh, you get nostalgic. Like, That's yeah, great. Oh, uh, yeah. I get like, wow, I did that like seven years ago or something. Yeah. Uh, yeah. There's some cringeworthy moments on some of my old designs. Uh, but I see a lot of heart. <laughs> yep. I see a yeah. lot of... You see the content. You can see through the styles. Yeah, a lot and that's of what ambitions. we're talking about, really. Yeah. Style guides, styles change. Yeah. But if the content is good and the, the idea and the layout is there, everything else the can be adjusted. There, yeah, everything sure. else can be adjusted, correct. Oh, Huxo, how are you, man? There yeah. you go. <clears throat> yeah, Tim says he always ends up changing or yeah. iterating. <laughs> <laughs> Usually after one night of sleep. It's a great tip. When you're creating something and you're working, it's good to walk away for a bit. Yeah, that's actually one of the things I tell my students because sometimes they just, you know, feel so short in time so they can't get everything done as they want and they just end up like, sometimes, you know, you get overwhelmed and you end up doing anything that comes in your mind. I was telling them, hey guys, like if you don't feel like designing, don't design, just go chill, relax, do anything, then come back again with fresh eyes. That would yeah. definitely help. That's so true. So real. And if for anyone who's feeling like creatively stalled, yeah. stunted, walk away is a good tip. But also take on, look at a different, look at it from a different perspective, the problem. That always helps. Maybe reframe it for yourself. Or what I like to do is like, I like looking at other creative things and people. And yeah, like anything, any anything. creative thing, yeah. Go on Behance scan through it, get, I always feel invigorated when I find a project or, um, or a case study that's like, I've, I never would have thought of that use case. I always feel super, it's always around the problem. If they, someone's found like an amazing solution to a problem, it like, I'm like back at work. I'm yeah. like, yes, I can go for like three yeah. more hours. <laughs> so what are your thoughts on uh, case studies? Case like, studies, they're yeah. all very different. Yes, I've seen yours. I've seen yours and they're very good. Mine? Yeah. Your Which case study. One? Well, case study. Well, I'm referring to case studies in a way of at Behance, you show Oh, yeah. Artwork. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. I appreciate that. So. Yeah, it's no, well I mean. Um, but what do you mean specifically? Uh, case studies like the ones we can uh, read on Medium, for example. Mm. Yeah. So, structure. Like the truest sense. Thought yeah. driven. More, more academic sense. Yeah. Um, 
important, very important. Um, in terms of designing with them in mind, or? Um, yeah, because, uh, yeah, this is actually one of the things that we try to encourage our students to do is um, you work in a team environment. So once you're done, case study for me is important because it gives you that space to come up with new thoughts or showcase your thoughts that you didn't have the chance to accomplish working in, in a group dynamic. So mm. um, it lets you focus on the process and come up with new approaches that probably I wouldn't like as a designer or other people would disagree with and put it out there and just collect more feedback. Probably mm. we're wrong, so. Very important. Yeah, well, I guess my opinion around case studies would be then I, yeah, I guess they're very important. <laughs> I don't think I refer back as much as I should to some regarding design while I'm designing. But I think about a topic at hand, I will include always, I think, um, different case studies different in, my, case study, in, yes. my, in my initial research. Um, but then when I'm designing, it's hard to kind of refer back. You know why? Because there's too much information. When you're designing and creating a solution for a problem, you kind of need to remember, just like your flow, the simplicity of what you're trying to come across. Yep. Um, it's more so. about like storytelling for me, case studies, mm -hmm. like other than just you know uh, impressing people with the visual components you came up with or um, the brand guidelines that you try to incorporate to flesh out your design. Having this thought process and uh, put it out there and collect feedback in terms of purely having a thought process that's for me, and storytelling technique, that's for me is very important. Yes, so. absolutely, absolutely. Do you feel like, because you've had a different, um, a different background, a different come up in the design oh, yeah. world, so do you think storytelling has um, transferred over from your previous work, or is that something that you had to relearn with design? Yeah, uh, if you guys don't know, like, uh, I was actually a banker back in the day, that was like seven years ago. <laughs> yes. Coming from an extensive business background, uh, that kind of, trained me on um, focusing on use cases and business mm -hmm. cases. So whenever we get a new project, so instead of just focusing on the creative process that would go and support this project, I have to consider what kind of resources this business can, can afford to carry out this uh, product su successfully. So uh, this is one thing and definitely focusing on the use case. What kind of use cases will be viable for this product? How mm -hmm. can we build it in a useful way? So it's more like technical thinking. Yeah. Yeah, so. Yeah. And critical for sure. Hmm. Yep. Let's see, so you're, uh, you can just walk us through kind of where this new screen, I'm trying, oh, what do I? All right, so now this is uh, where the splitting functionality will take place. So once you um, enter the bill information, you selected your friends and uh, you're all done in here, you jump into the splitter, if we can call it that yeah, way. Yeah. yeah, like that's where you split all the, um, um, yeah, like everything, total of grand total tax and tip, uh, or at least that's what I'm trying to do. Um, so you have total of four friends that you selected and you will have a separate display for each one of them so you can uh, get a better view of how much everyone will incur like in terms of the grand total and the tax and tip. Um, something I will actually give a credit for my students a little bit here because they definitely helped me uh, shape this screen in a certain way. After we finish it, it will be much clearer for everyone how, uh, how it works. Mm. But they definitely helped me with that because they were trying to swap with me a little bit. So they were trying to be, provide more critique for me. Oh, that's great. Yeah. So you're learning from your students. Yes, yes. In fact, yes, a lot. So. That's great. Your, uh, did you tell your students to tune in today? Yeah, I definitely did, but I, ah. I doubt they will have time because they need to um, deliver lo-fis. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you heard that. If you're a student of Osama's, do not forget to oh finish my. your homework. Oh my goodness. <laughs> It's a client project. They have to be dedicated. Oh, exactly. <laughs> so if you're watching, leave. No, I'm just kidding. No. <laughs> don't leave, don't leave. Say, oh, man, that's so funny. 
yeah, I would say like, yeah, your students is a great um, asset for your students as well. Do you, have you, have they watched Adobe Live in general? Uh, yes, oh, I actually cool. made them. I shared the links with them again, like nice. a couple times before. We're in classrooms. I love it. Okay. For anyone who's just joining, um, we are here today with um, Osama Kazal. Kazal? Yep. And um, we're going through a bill splitting app. And um, we've talked a lot about not just not just the bill itself and tipping. We've also talked a lot about the design system that Osama built and he brought in to um, to this new this new file. And right now we're doing wireframing, and we're talking gray and black boxes. Yeah. And nothing makes me happier as a UX designer than to see a lot of gray and black boxes. <laughs> oh man! I know it's not the most like colorful thing, but. We can really see kind of your flow through through wireframes. Um, yeah, like pretty much uh, focusing on the content itself rather mm -hmm. than just getting into or distracting yourself with the aesthetics that will come later. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. <clears throat> and excuse me, guys, if I'm stuttering while speaking, but I'm trying to focus here and, and oh, like, yeah. <laughs> engaging oh, yeah. with you guys at the same time, so Chat's it's a little doing, tricky. Chat's doing great. Yeah. We're doing great here, you guys. Um, if you guys are looking for some more interaction with us, we actually have a daily creative challenge that we pose almost weekly, basically weekly. Yeah, those are fun ones, uh -huh, believe it or not. Mm -hmm. and a lot of people in chat have already been a part of it, but there's a great, there's a tab right above the chat that says challenge. Do you, want, you can click on over and it'll bring you to the daily creative challenge, the XD daily creative challenge. And um, today's challenge is all about user flows. So it's great, you know, right before our stream, um, Peter streamed and talked about um, how to create a, a user flow in low fidelity. And there's even a starter file here to get you ready. So, oh, hello. <laughs> um, so make sure you guys participate because at the end of our stream or in 20 minutes towards the end, uh, we're gonna look at your, your designs and we'll, we'll check them out. Um, you'll become a part of the community over on Discord. So you just gotta join the community and let us know and we'll talk about them. We'll give them, we'll give critiques. Yep. We'll, we'll learn about a little bit maybe of you as a designer and yeah, just come back each day. We have today and tomorrow looks like, yep, every day this week and Halloween is this week. I wonder what oh, the creative uh, challenge this week is gonna be for Halloween. I oh, cannot darn. wait. Yeah, Halloween, <laughs> spooky. Do you have a uh, costume? Do you? I them. had one in Miami. <laughs> I lost it. And I had a mask, a pharaoh mask, of course. Mm -hmm. Ancient Egyptian mask because a mummy. A that mummy. Was, yeah. Because <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm originally from Egypt. I can't help it. <laughs> oh, nice. Right on. Right on. I did not have a costume this year. Chat, what were your. We're talking about costumes. Do you have one? Do you have one yet? Well, now? You're yeah. asking me or no, the I'm chat? Talking oh, chat. yeah. yeah. In the chat, talking. Oh, I'm glad you made it, Jermaine. Jermaine. Finally here. He was stuck in the chat on YouTube. <laughs> I'm glad you made it. <laughs> and make sure to join the Discord. Yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing these um, creative challenges today. And you participated in them. Have you done one or several? I've done two, I guess. But that was a long time ago. Yeah, like a year, a year and a year and three months outside. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Is that my hand is that my fake user handle? Yeah. <laughs> That's the fake user handle, guys. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Makes sense, we don't tip on tax. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Remember the good old days of just giving your friend five bucks. And we're all happy. And we're all happy. <laughs> or the, <laughs> I had a friend who would charge for a slice of pizza. Okay. If they got a whole pizza. Yeah. What? That's a thing. That was a thing that I've seen happen. So you would get a, pizza, you'd like order a pizza like in college. I'm like, I got a pizza. And my friend would be like, yeah, you could have a slice. Oh, grab a slice. I'd be like, oh, cool, thanks. I'm hungry. He'd be like, you could just shoot me like 
three bucks, four bucks. And I'm like, this is a dollar slice, first off. Oh Second off, that classmate is definitely making lots of money <laughs> wherever they are. Right. Oh, well, have you guys seen my uh, layer panel in here? Mm. I mean, I'd like to recall what Howard wrote on Twitter. Life's too short to name your layers. <laughs> Howard Brinsgate, I mean, I'm not gonna lie, I'm not so good at naming layers, but I try my best. I try my best. Oh man, I don't even, I don't, you, you actually name. You try your best to name. Yeah, I'm, I'm, because like if I'm working with a team, like other designers yeah. will be looking at my work and what is going on? So. Naming your layers, whoo, that is a pro move. Oh, what did you, you just use a, oh, you just uh, used a plugin. Yeah, now I'm using a plugin called User Faces, um, just to insert some hypothetical friend <laughs> personas in here. Uh, awesome. I wonder this? if you can do multiple. Yeah, but, I mean, you can highlight all of them and do it once, but because I grouped these elements together, uh, so that's why, but I mean, I can ungroup these and show them what you're talking about. So you can definitely highlight two placeholders. Go to, let's go a little bit crazy with this, user UI faces, uh, then go to pixel on splash, here in the mail, then, Everything. And I don't apply. discriminate. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Everything. Then here we go. Perfect. It places all the images you want in a placeholders. Just a click of a button. So much easier than going and finding and masking. Yeah. And trying absolutely. to find a photo of somebody. No. Just use the plugin. Yep. Please. <laughs> <laughs> um. All right. So this is how we display like in a separate view um, what each one of them will pay. Then now actually the tricky part, how we're gonna be splitting. How we're gonna be splitting evenly and unevenly. So I'm gonna do this. Evenly and unevenly. Because mm -hmm. yeah. some people might leave earlier so they don't have to pay as much tip as or, other oh, people. Oh, yeah. Or they like maybe had like something like little, like yeah. less, didn't have that drink, just yep. had a salad. Yeah, something like that. A soup for and sure. salad. Yeah. Friends. <laughs> we all know those friends. Seth oh, says, uh, <laughs> right? You know, it's just like, I just ordered a soup and salad. Oh, yeah. It's like, ugh. Okay. Okay, here. Um, Stefan <laughs> says, I wonder if there's any way we could make a smart layering naming system, smart layer naming system. That's we actually, a great idea. Uh, we have actually, it's like renamed the layer, it's a plugin. I just don't remember Boom. what exactly. Boom, Stefan, yeah. did you hear that? It's a plugin already. Yeah, rename your layer and rename it. Rename it, yeah, okay, you this can. exists already. Can, yeah. you, can you show us maybe? Yeah, sure, so what you can do is just get back to the layers panel and let's highlight these layers then go to plugin rename it, rename selected layers, and you can, Bam. yeah. So this is gonna be the master name for all the layers. So let's call it mm, Bell Info. Then you can um, organize or arrange the layers by numbers, layer width, height, sequence if you want. So just keep it simple for now and make it um, layer name and start from one. Hmm. Then rename and all of them will be. Oh wow, look at that. Yeah, so it's not super clear. So what we can do, because they all have the same name, which is build info. So if we can repeat that again with a different naming, probably naming convention. So hmm. info and number, that will be more convenient, right? Mm -hmm. That's obvious. Yeah. So we have the Descending names. Descending and yeah. with increasing numbers. So it's a really Apple. helpful um, plugin we have here next to you guys can use it for sure. Nice, there we'll you just... go. Ask and you shall receive. Uh, <laughs> that is a community mind working right there. Okay. So installing it already. Yeah. I'm installing it now. Uh, cool. All right, what I was doing? Oh yeah, um, I was the, working the, on the, the slider. The slider. <laughs> oh, the slider, nice. Yeah. So we're gonna actually create the slider in here. Let me get back to... And, oh wait, started kicking in now, I started getting hungry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Yeah, it's funny how many people will create apps that are all around food right before on yeah. this XD stream, and it's usually around lunchtime. Yeah. And it's always like, why did you do an app about food? Now we're all <laughs> hungry, thank you. <laughs> oh, awesome. Oh, I like where you're going with this. Yeah. Then what we're gonna have now is a more visual cue to indicate uh, the percentage that each row will incur. So it's gonna be like 25%. The default status here will be 25%, uh, like equal distribution across all the friends. Because then, there's four of them. Yeah. Mm. Then um, once you identify how much everyone will end up paying, you can move the slider up and down just to differentiate the numbers a little bit and everything will Repopulate, and we're gonna have like a nice slot machine animation to uh, showcase that. But hopefully by tomorrow, because that will be a more of um, hi-fi work Pro and fun prototyping. Yeah, that's fun. I like this. I like how it and and you know theoretically, depending on how many people, yep. it will figure out the percentage. Yep, that's yep. great. It's a very vi it's a very great re visual representation of this of this idea of splitting a bill. Yeah. <laughs> and actually, like, the reason I spend too much time working on this one, even before posting on Behance or Dribble Lake, because, again, I'm not trying to replicate a calculator that I already have on my phone. Um, mm -hmm. I don't want people to deal with entering number, use addition or subtraction uh, marks to differentiate a number. Just something seamless and unified across all the functionalities will help. Mm. That's good. Stefan says it doesn't work on components. The uh, that plugin. Uh, the rename. Mm. Oh yeah. Well, we got close. Yep. Okay, so now yes. we're almost done with this one and ground tool tip. What do you think are the most important things when you're creating a um, wireframe to call out? For um, you know, is it? Is it important to get into really intense detail with your wireframes too, or is it, yeah, can I talk um, us through what, you're, what you showcase in your wireframes? Yes. Uh, I notice you put a lot of um, like names and we have like yeah. the right so numbers. In, in wireframing, I personally prefer to have um, like a certain degree of details. Why? Because at the end of it, that's what you're gonna use to test with people. Like you're gonna hire um, testing participants to you know, examining the flow and the functionality of your app and um, provide feedback. So if you don't have enough detail to describe the functionality, they are gonna get stuck. Like they're not gonna be able to understand where to go. And you will end up trying to explain and guide them through the process and you shouldn't be guiding them through the process. Mm. So um, yeah, so that's basically why I try to add some details to my wireframes. Um, because I'm always thinking about what will happen next, which is testing. Right. Yeah. So it's enough to get your user test yes. th through through the flow. Yes. Mm. So they don't have to wait for you until you finish the UI and test. No, testing earlier as possible. Got it. Yeah. Got it. All right. And what we're going to be doing now is just an indication that those selected friends can be combined into one group. So we're going to create a tooltip for that. Mm -hmm. and have, let's, let's group everything in here and <clears throat> so tool tip, tool tip. yeah stone says as a developer minimizing redundancy in the final descriptions is that important in terms of naming at conventions i'm wondering um in the final descriptions like Final descriptions you mean by the copy deck that goes with the um, screens or what? Get back to us. Yeah. Get back to us. Right, so I have this one screen. Nice. <clears throat> so the way I imagine it work is once you land on the screen, you will have this quick tool tip that you can combine all these uh, selected friends into one group. Mm. That's basically it. Got it. So it's As kind a, of like a pop-up yeah, type tool yeah. kit, um, tool tip. So basically for creating groups, we will have a complete different view, uh, mm. view, I mean, <laughs> complete different view, but just uh, as an additional access point to creating groups, basically. Understood. 
pretty cool. Sometimes says, UI kits like material design are a good way to get the user testing as soon as possible. Users feel like they're using a real app. Yep. Yeah. It's a great way to kind of, you know, see how something's going to work. Mm -hmm. If it if it looks like something that they don't they don't have to question it too much, yep. it's great. Um, but also there's something to be said around a very low fidelity prototype and showing that to users. And I think you get very similar results. With um, low fies? With low fies. I think you get good oh. results with low fies. I think you I think you the the they're different questions you're asking though. Yeah. Right? You know, like if this if this small feature works, this 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 little thing works, if this flow works, if this idea is the yeah. idea to go with. You need different prototypes for different stages. Yeah, well, honestly um, I never tried it before, like testing with lo fi's. Lo never tried it before. Oh, lo fi's are great. I used to we used to in school they used to tell us to we had had them on paper. And I remember we did very, like a an app on paper and we just kind of showed it to people. And we're like, where do you think you're going? Like next and we'd pull it and then next and we'd pull the car Whoa. and then eventually you'd be like okay this they ask questions like well do i even need to pay with this app and it's you know if it was like a payment app yeah. i'd be like i guess you don't maybe it's not an app <laughs> maybe what? the solution's not an app yeah. and we before we invested weeks creating um the ui we we kind of had our idea our um um va validation over this idea not working so it's a, huh, it's a, yeah. But I mean, it takes a lot of time just to uh, replicate the process or simulate the process and move the cards and piece of papers. Yeah, That's totally, what, yeah. totally, totally. It's totally a different use case. Yep. I think now that we have software tools like XD, um, and you can just kind of send a very hi-fi version of yep. the app that you've maybe made very, very quickly because you've used plugins or maybe a UI kit, and you're just kind of like, this idea generally, will this work? The fact that you can send it through to your mobile phone immediately and put it in front of someone and have them interact with it, um, I think it's take, it takes prototyping up to a different level. Because yep. it's almost like this hi-fi prototyping is still lo-fi yep. because it happens so fast. Yep. And you're being so specific in terms of the tasks that you're trying to test. Yeah. So it really just depends on what your questions you're trying to f answer. Yep. Right? Does yep. this need to be an, is this um, problem we're solving need to be this type of app? Maybe it's a whole different system in use. Um, Marissa said she did the paper prototypes in a low level HCI course. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. It's a, they're, they're a thing. HCI course, paper, yeah. paper prototypes are a fun way to, um, learn about prototyping. Hmm. So how would you, because I've never tried it before, so yeah. like how would you incorporate that if you're working on a uh, three weeks project or two weeks project? How you do it. It's, it's something you do like right at the beginning. Oh. Like right yeah. at the beginning. Maybe you've done, and now you've done like a little bit of research <clears throat> and you're, like I said, maybe you're creating an app for a restaurant, some type of like check-in situation and you're trying to decide whether a, you know, you need this many screens or you need this many, um, you know, who would be your participant? And so you kind of go into those places with your mock app, yeah. <laughs> and you like just kind of like, do you think, you know, if you were to check in, would you hit these buttons or whatnot? It's a, it's it's fun. I I don't think I've ever used them in like a professional setting. Yeah. Um. I've. Yeah, but it was a great way to get my mind working around the idea of what somebody needs to move an idea forward, mm -hmm. to understand your idea. Validation. It's validation. Yeah. It was a practice and validation, and it was fun. You, yeah, you just moved. You moved yeah, the cards. Yeah, no, of course. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So Wonder, yeah, and we're at five minutes till the creative count. Uh, daily creative challenge is is up and live and we're talking about them. So everybody submit your work. Um, doesn't matter if it's done. It can be, it could be kind of rough. We just want to see them. Then now I'm going to do it just to work a little faster. In <laughs> well, we have some time afterwards, yeah. you know, okay. we'll, we'll check in with the creative challenge and then we can wrap up with you, but we still have some time in general. 
And Santaj says the same thing I said, which is depends on the case by case basis in the end, what type of prototypes to do. Hmm. Yep, I'd say that. Yeah, because people get the gist. If you say it's a prototype, people understand. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I like your tool tip. Oh, thanks. <laughs> Nice. So I like the, the idea around, like, do you want to save this group for future splits and saving your groups that you eat with? Yeah. That's great. Oh, yeah. Gal, or if anyone's, if anyone's brand new into the stream right now, which maybe there is, maybe some people kind of came in a little late, and that's totally fine. We are here with Osama Ghazal, and we are going through a, an app that helps you split your bill, <laughs> a bill-splitting app. And we've included tip. Yep. And tax. <laughs> a tip and a tax. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, today we're going through the wireframes, and tomorrow we'll be really applying applying a really, really awesome design system um, that was created by Osama. And so, so we're excited to see that tomorrow. In the meantime, we have some creative challenges that are unlocking, t that unlock today and tomorrow. So I hope everyone's going to be on, in on that. Yep. That's fun. It really trains you guys. Oh, you gotta try it. See, I never would advocate. <laughs> All right. So now I'm almost done with um, like how to go through entering bill information to select in certain group of friends and split with them. And now I need to design. If you already have existing groups that you want to select from and split right away. Got it. Yeah. So. <clears throat> Nice. And it looks like the creative challenge today is all about low fidelity wireframes. Oh. So they <laughs> really shouldn't be that polished. And so I'm excited to yeah. see this. It's a good tool. It's a good, it's a good um, practice. How fast do you make your students bust out a, a low fidelity wireframe? Uh, just one version of it. And all the feedback that we provide on it, they can apply on Metvice. Mm. So, but, so. but how, like, how fast? Do you, so between like getting your project and then like giving you guys wireframes. Uh, no, like right after they finish their research ah. on deployment channels and collecting data, affinity diagrams, and all that done, they start lo-fiing. Got it. Yeah. Right away. Awesome. We'll be, we'll be able to get to um, get to see some really cool design styles getting applied tomorrow. Oh, I cannot so wait. If you guys are so. here for like the colors and typography, that's tomorrow. So yeah. tune in. Yep, and I'm excited for this challenge. I can already see some of you guys um, submitting in Discord. Good job. Stefan says, mine's hella ugly. <laughs> it's yeah. a lo-fi, guys. It's, it's supposed to be ugly. <laughs> it's supposed to be. It's totally supposed to be. And another one of the um, asks for today's creative challenge is to create a mood board that informs your color type and asset choices. So we'll see. We'll see what people <laughs> have gotten to. Tim says, let's see if everyone used Comic Sans. Oh, wow. I hope so. Oh, man. <laughs> I really do. Should be a, it should be a rule. When, when making wireframes, must use Comic Sans. Comic Sans, so. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's a joke. We make fun of it, but it was, a, it was a typeface widely used for a very long time. For a very long time. For a very that long is, time. Yeah. Stone says, children prefer Comic Sans. True stat. What can you say again? What can you say? Yeah. Exactly. Like, it's a font for a reason. Yeah. Nice. All right, you guys. We are at the design feedback countdown has stopped. Let's check out your designs. Awesome. I'm excited. Creative challenge today. One more time. It's all about user flows, low fidelity wireframes. This one's a fun one. Let's check them out. I'm going to let you guys keep uploading, but I've pulled over somebody's already. We 
wish I could tell us. Okay, let's go to one. Here we go. Alrighty. Look at that. So some sort of, uh, what's great about this is it's lo-fi, so we can kind of get, you know, what are the main points happening on your lo-fi wireframe, you know? So we know it's a video sharing. Sectioning. Sectioning, yeah. Yep. Based on the sectioning platform of some sort. Mm -hmm. Which is great. We can already get that from like your basic, basic wireframe yep. of the sorts. Um, hello, <laughs> common sense. Hello there, hello welcome. There, welcome. <laughs> All righty. All right. So it's like a little bit of a... a mini oh, wow. Right. Actually, we knew this. We knew this was a part of the prompt. It was, it was all about a streaming yeah. service, right? And a streaming tech, kind of like the one we have right now. It's almost like redesigning the Adobe Live experience. I love this. I love them popping up on the side. I love. I really love them. I love yeah. that. That's great. Stefan, that's great. Yeah. Hello, they're welcome. Love this show. And it also gives you like a chance once they pop this way, they, it gives you a really good chance when you uh, start thinking about scaling. Like imagine if you have 10 replies or 10 comments or whatever that is. So it's really a nice way to navigate through all of them. Yeah. Good job. Good job, Stephen. Oh, no, that's the thing. Sorry. Cool. Yeah. That's great. All right. Work in progress. Oh, it's coming in as a PDF. I love that. Oh, that's the whole thing. <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. We'll figure that out in a second. All right. Let's take a look at this again. Cool. Stone says, Stone says it's like listening to your favorite album while creating. The two of you. Yes. Kind of. Isn't it? Okay. It's meta. I like it. Definitely my playlist. Stephen, here we go. Stephen, we got the designer on the chat with us of this current app um, wireframe flow we're looking at. So let's talk about it. Can decide whether to have the keyboard pop up horizontally or just vertical mode where there's room. What are your thoughts? Um, so I'm talking about this. So let me read it again. So we're going to decide whether I have the keyboard pop up horizontally or just a vertical mode. Yeah, I would go with the latter. Yes, a horizontal. Uh, vertical mode, sorry. Vertical mode. Yeah, vertical mode. Like this. This yeah. is kind of. Yeah, yeah. Versus popping it up. Because it's also closer to your hands, like when you type faster. Yeah, I don't know a lot of users that can can do that well. Can have access to that keyboard well, like well that while while a video streaming as well. That would be a very hard interaction. So I think you did a good job. Yeah. Yep. Going with that. Cool. Let's see if we have more coming up. Ooh, open original. Very cool. Nice. Okay, so that wireframe, yeah. awesome. Okay. I like it. Well, I really like, what I really like are is using the color red. Mm -hmm. So we see what you're highlighting, which is a yeah. great, great way to kind of use that, use like a, a pop of color. Yeah. Especially on a wireframe where there's no, not really words except for maybe like a couple of here. Yeah, the way like uh, unify, unifying the the accent color across the entire screen is yeah. pretty, yeah. The one thing I would have to say though is um, making sure that accent color is describing one specific thing. I don't know whether or not all of these reds are related in this way. Is this, yeah. are these all new features maybe? Cause that's, you know, or is this, yeah. Are these just like all of them are hidden targets or all of them are buttons like uh, that's definitely one of the things that you need to consider. Um, and also using a different color to the loading bar, like the timeline, that would also be helpful. Uh, but overall, I'm really liking the style here. Yeah, totally. Yeah, yeah. yeah this is exactly what a wireframe should be like. Should be, yeah, yeah. It, need, it needs to be. Yeah. You know, it doesn't have to be any more frill than yeah. here is some channels, some categories, features, and yeah, and our only critique, if any, is, is the use of your indicating color of red. Yeah, and, and also it, one more thing is just the circle in its own, like inside of the placeholder. Um, is it supposed to be a video? I'm assuming it's a video because it's pretty obvious what you're trying to wireframe, but um, also it helps if you have the play icon inside of it to indicate more that this is a video because it can be any media file, like a yeah. picture or something. Is it just an image yeah. with a loading bar? Yeah. Yeah. Or maybe it's music, you know, music, or, or music, cover. or yeah, um, or yeah. maybe a slideshow. With I mean, yeah, there are a lot of or, things that yeah, you can assume presentation or yeah, something. So yeah, so just kind of indicating you can indicate these these files and 
and then playing around with your accent color yep. and what it's supposed to kind of be describing. Yeah. Because I'm thinking, is it the logo that's everywhere? Is it the, you know? It's, yeah. it's a little, that's the one confusing part of the wireframe. Mm -hmm. Cool, but that one's great. I love that yeah, one. Yeah, really loving it. Loving it. Let's see if anybody has any new ones. I'm not seeing any new ones, so if, yeah, if we're all, if we're all tapped out, that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. Page two is mobile. Oh, I want to see page two mobile. Cornelian, let's see. I knew there was a page two to that one. Page two. There's no page two. Okay. So, yeah. Next time, we can maybe we'll look it over tomorrow after yeah, the creative yeah. challenge tomorrow, but thanks so much. Um, we, uh, we can't wait to see the ones that come out tomorrow. And good job wireframing, y'all. That's awesome, yeah. That's basically what we said before. Like, that's what wireframing is about. <laughs> or low fidelity, what is low fidelity is about, so. Yep, yep, and that's, awesome. all, that's all we're doing today. Yep. So some really basic wireframing. Yeah, I probably uh, was going like too crazy with the details here, but it's just because it's a short amount of time and I have to accomplish a lot before tomorrow, so. <laughs> Yeah, um, so back to where we stopped. We stopped here, designing the uh, group section of the app, so. Yeah, so this is the, this is groups, yeah. right, yeah. That's how we find our groups. Oh. Whoa, glitch. Yeah, that's a glitch. No, we don't want to install. Okay. <laughs> I have no idea what that is, but Dude, let's pretend it never happened. <laughs> yeah. So for groups, and we have a little filter icon in here. That can be completely changed tomorrow. It depends on the mode. <laughs> The redesign of the hamburger menu? Yeah, no. Filters, <laughs> more of filters. Filters, yeah. got it, okay. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Cool. And I wouldn't be surprised if I changed it tomorrow, honestly, but. Yeah, because yeah. I thought it was a hamburger. Yeah. <laughs> so there should be a first user test. Yeah. Uh, I just leave it here for now as a placeholder, then can get to back to it tomorrow. Yeah. So your so your teacher was there something around like did you what made you want to be an instructor of sorts for UX? Uh, oh, that's a good question. Um, a first, lot of people yeah. that wouldn't want to. So that... Honestly, I never uh, expected myself to become a teacher, mm. especially in design, because uh, I have some good experience when it comes to uh, work. Mm -hmm. like, you know, like creative work, but I didn't go to school to learn design. So that was a little bit tricky for me because mm. I didn't know how would people uh, expect, what would people expect from me as a teacher as opposed to just being a designer. Uh, so I was a little bit hesitant in the beginning, but I said, you know what, like I'm just gonna do it and see what happens. Yeah. And honestly, it was great. Yeah. Wow, so it was like the idea of not having like the ed formal education Kind that's of, definitely, kind of yes, driven. that's definitely one of the, the reasons, know. yeah. It's something we talk a lot about in the stream, or we've learned from all the designers, is nobody has like a set way of entering the field, right? Yeah. Like not everybody has a, oh a formal education of design. I feel like very little designers Yeah, especially do. like in my classroom, we have, we, I've been teaching for like almost three cohorts, and we have people coming from crazy backgrounds, like biology, psychology, wow. like, yeah, so. Wow, yeah. It's really amazing. Yep. So it says, such a kind word, glitch. Which are <laughs> safe, no need for a bug. <laughs> Let's call this group my peeps. <laughs> Something peeps. like that, yeah. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, I like to say glitch because it reminds me of like the Matrix. That's why I say glitch whenever some, gl I say oh, yeah. instead of bug or, yeah. I can't think of any other word I say. Stone says burp. <laughs> a burp. I'm, I'm a little bit, yeah, I'm a little bit 
on the fence. Like, I don't know what should I decide in here. Okay, let's just go with the flow, see what would happen. Um, oh, nice. We're designing on the on the fly. <laughs> Trying to decide what goes in these pe when in the little group section of this app. Tim says, we don't make mistakes, we just have happy little accidents. <laughs> That's a good way to articulate it, Tim. <laughs> yes, yeah. it's true. It's, uh, yeah, how many times have you, like, has your cursor moved slightly and you're like, oh, that looks really good. All the time. <laughs> All the time. <laughs> All the time, yeah. Mm, Tim says, it's not a bug, it's a feature. Sure. Yeah, <laughs> sure. Absolutely, I'll go with that. So, um, let's see if we have any late submissions to our creative challenge. I just think it's a great creative challenge to do right now. You know, you're wireframing, there, everyone in the chat's wireframing, we're yep. just wireframing all the live long day. So what was the biggest project that you ever worked on before? Like how many screens in terms of the number of screens? How many screens? Yeah. I can't even, I can't even imagine. Probably hundreds Whoa. of screens, but like it wasn't, it was like a, a larger project I was a part of. Yeah. Like like, I don't think I created every single screen. Yeah, but you were involved in the process of so, uh, mm -hmm. yeah. Yes, hundreds. Um, it's very hard with file sharing when it gets very, when, when it gets like that, but we were, I only had a couple of features that I had to take care of, so yeah. yeah. Organization when it gets big is important. Yeah. How about you? What's the biggest um, the amount of screens that you've built? Yeah, uh, ever since I started designing, I was working purely on mobile applications. Mm -hmm. So the biggest, I would say, like fifty something. Wow. Yeah, that That's was good. Yeah, that was actually a huge one. Um, it's called Logoscopic. And yeah. Yeah, Logoscopic and Vanilla Pen, like sister app, I would say. And they were like huge because they rely mostly on creative outlets. So it lets people download uh, logo presets and stuff like that. So oh. yeah, it took a lot. Of, you were designing, you were designing basically a design to des tool. A design tool. Yeah, wow. So. Yeah. Well, I think a lot of uh, yeah, I think a lot of people here at Adobe understand that. Oh yeah, I life. can tell for sure. <laughs> designing the yeah. design tool. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I'm pretty sure people who, I'm pretty sure, I'm, I don't know if any designers of XD are watching right now, but I'm, get, correct me if I'm wrong, you design XD with XD. I'm pretty sure that's the thing. That's a thing, for yeah, sure. Yeah, I'm pretty sure they're designing like XD with XD, yeah. which is the most confusing thing, <laughs> but mad props. Problem exist. Tim says problem exists between chair and keyboard. Problem exists between chair and keyboard. Hmm. Chair and keyboard. Oh, us. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, Tim says yes, they do. Also right. Photoshop. Whoa, Photoshop signs with Photoshop. What? That's wild. <laughs> That's so, that's whimsical. <laughs> or does Photoshop design with XD? That's yeah. the question. Yeah. That's yeah, Stefan, I saw there was a new wireframe for someone in Discord. Why don't we take a look at it, if we can. If we can come over sure. to my screen. So we can just kind of look at one more uh, daily creative. <clears throat> it's all good, it's all good. <laughs> You're doing great. Um, there we go, that's what I'm talking about. Oh man, yeah, so I'm so some, familiar with that. <laughs> some, some real boxes. Uh. Awesome. Here we go. The most basic mock-up we need to have, you know? Yeah. It's it's great. I just say that the logo placeholder is like quite breaking the grid. Um, right here. Yeah. Yeah. So Yeah, yeah. say more. But overall, like damn, that's extensive. So Yeah. It's where everything's gonna go. Yep. Yeah. I think the one thing missing maybe would be a little bit of a a, a guide a for guide, for yeah. us to kind of this is great when you're when you when you it's kind of yourself yeah. and you're like okay I need to lay out all my things I need to put them all in a wireframe and only you see them but it'd be you know say you're sharing this with someone or another designer like yeah. us um, and you want to kind of 
visual hierarchy. Kind basically. of give us a hierarchy, yes. or kind of what the other designer did with the with the red. Yeah. Give us a little. Give us a call out here or there. You know, maybe the one thing that makes this changes this design from something that is just boxes. Right? Yeah, it's definitely the combo between like visual and information hierarchy. It's so, like definitely will help to for other people, as you mentioned, to read after you. Yeah. yeah. There you go. But we can totally get, I love, look at this, it's... Content-wise, it seems like very levels. extensive and a lot of thought process behind it, honestly. Yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah, definitely, absolutely, absolutely. I'm trying to kind of learn more and deep deep dive into these little tabs here, because mm. I think this is where it, the design gets interesting. So a great way to kind of elaborate on this um, wireframe more would be like, kind of give us a little more information around here, these little flags. I see German level A1, A2, B1, B2 something really interesting about mm. this. And unless I really looked at it and dove kind of deep in and, and started reading, I wouldn't have known that. So mm. what's the way you can give it, give that to us quickly? Uh, for this one, for I would- As a wireframe, something yeah. really simple. What could, what could be done? I would, I would have said like hover state, but it's not gonna work here because it's gonna be complicated for a simple wireframe for sure. Yeah, no, yeah. not for wireframe. Colors, Color. I would say colors. Yeah, for wireframe, you can definitely use uh, like certain colors to indicate what you're selecting or what you're hovering over. So colors for sure. Yeah, and uh, Laura Mipsum, what's your what's your thought? I have a love hate relationship with, yeah. <laughs> with the Laura Mipsum placeholder. Tell me more. But I mean, at least for like the headers, try to put some effort in it. I'm not talking about this design uh, in specific, like in general, if you're designing a wireframe, at least the headers should be more descriptive. The body text can be lower ipsum if you're like running, running out of time or something. Uh, but headers, please no lower ipsum. <laughs> uh, something more yeah. than lower ipsum. Yeah. Yeah. It's, a, they're, they're, it's a great, <laughs> it's a great amount of, it's, Lorem Ipsum's great for, for long bodies of text that you really, people just yeah. need to scan over. Yeah. But when it's something that's right at the beginning, kind of giving us an idea of what you're making, yeah. it's helpful to have um, real text. Real text. Even if it's yeah. not perfectly, you know, perfect copy, yeah. it doesn't have to be like exact funny, you know, it doesn't have to be on brand with what you're making, but something like that'll get us to that point where we understand what's happening. And just like the call outs, um, so it's all about storytelling, right? And how can you do that as fast as you can? Yep. Um, there's a great plugin actually for body text. It's called Wiki. Wiki, yes. Have I you was ever used try, it? No, I was think I never what? used it, but that's why it got really quiet because I was trying to remember. Remember the name. that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank Wiki's you. Wiki's awesome. It's yeah. Um, yeah, you just, it takes the Wikipedia text from yeah. whatever subject kind of you write in to the plugin. And it makes way more sense yeah, than Yeah, maybe I can sure. pull it up really yeah. quick just to show you while you kind of can, can wrap up. This is me playing around. Um, let's go text, um, text. So, where is it? Wikify. Wikify. Wikify is the go. name. So here we go, there's the, right over here. Um, and let's see, let's, um, let's restaurant, let's burger. Burgers, maybe we wanna, it's an app about burgers. Let's Wikify, it's gonna pull up, oh look at that, text around burgers. Right. Yeah. So these, there you go. It's All the like text you need. Hypothetical text, but makes more sense than exactly, exactly. Yeah. Hypothetical text. So you know, play around a little bit more. Um, overall, great wireframe. Just honestly great. If you were just needed it to build your your site, it's going to work for you perfectly. It's a dra you can just drag and drop. We had a little bit of a note around the grid, but hey, it's a wireframe. No worries. Awesome. Cool. Thanks for that last submission. Thank you. That was extensive one, though, I have to tell him, so. Yeah, Right on. Really cool. Let's see. Oh, Tim actually clarified. No, Photoshop designs with XD. Yeah. Wow. Thank you, Tim, that makes. <laughs> that clarifies things yeah. for sure. I mean, early days of UX, people were using Photoshop, really. Yeah. Anything they can get their hands on, um, but that's trippy. That's cool. When you design Photoshop with in XD, in XD yeah, I course. love that. So before XD and any uh, UX specific software, what did you use for design? 
Adobe products. Yeah. No, no, no. <laughs> I'm not saying like Adobe Illustrator, Photoshop, because yeah. uh, I use Photoshop for Photoshop. UX for a long time. Yeah. No, yeah. I definitely did too. Uh, Illustrator, I guess, because I was used to do um, like web, any type of web design work. Uh -huh. I was like overlapping and I don't know. Photoshop, yeah. yeah. If I can remember back that far, it's kind of always been the thing to use. Yep. For anything design related. Now we're going to have this group in here. I All promise right. you guys it's gonna look much better tomorrow. <laughs> so. uh, Photoshop and Illustrator. They introduced Tim used Photoshop and Illustrator. They introduced artboards and Photoshop because of UI design. That's right. That's I remember that. Right, yeah. 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 Classic. It's a classic tool. Yep. Use it for everything, not just photos. Like arts. Manipulation. Yeah, editing. make sure to tune into this live stream right before us where they go through oh. Adobe, uh, Adobe Photoshop. Yep. Right, so I'm going to have this and. Look at that. Was that a repeat grid? Or did you just copy that? No, I copy it. I Old school. No, I love it. No. Sometimes you just got to do it. You... The thing is, when you're making a wireframe, you're just doing it as fast as you can, just getting it, getting it out. So we're kind of, we're coming towards the end and I'd love to kind of like walk through okay, everything we've sure. done today with you, but if you're just joining, which maybe you are, <laughs> it could it could be a very big possibility. And we have come a long way, Marissa. Um, we're here with Osama Ghazal and we are going through a bill splitting app. And tomorrow we're gonna be applying some design, a design system that he's created himself. Yep. But right now we're gonna go through that wireframe. This one. Ooh. Right, so uh, as you said, as you mentioned, Alexa. So today we're we're trying to wireframe the app, the major functionalities here, and we decided that we're focusing on three things: uh, intro and build information, uh, split with groups, and the final one, which is split evenly and unevenly. Uh, we're almost done with the wireframe; like four more screens to go. So I'll definitely make sure to get that ready for tomorrow because I want to dedicate the entire session tomorrow for hi-fi is like applying these elements and colors and add just a little bit of animations that hopefully uh, would be fun for everyone here in the chat as well. It's going to be awesome. Yep. We can't wait. Um, can we could click through it really quickly, like just before we wrap? Can you see what, yeah, you are. Oh, yeah. yeah, sure. So, so this is the first one where you enter all the bill information. You can, um, or that would be even clearer tomorrow, like you enter the total of the bill, then tax and tip. Then you choose the friends that you want to split the, uh, bill, the bill with. And after you do so, you go to the split screen where you can um, control how much everyone will pay. And the options button will give you um, more choices if you want to edit the bill information or even if you want to exit the entire process and restart. Okay. Then this is a tool tip um, to create a group from the people you selected. Mm. Then tomorrow we will finalize what we started in this section which is uh, choosing from existing groups you have. Instead of selecting people all from the start, you can choose an existing group and start splitting right away. Very cool. Yeah. Probably do a little bit of prototyping as well. Absolutely, and some really some cool features, though specifically around the splitting, the, the the actual percentage increasing. Oh, that would be a fun one. That's gonna that be really be a cool. Fun one, yeah. Wow, I can't wait. Yeah. Well, thanks so much. Make sure to check out um, Sam on all of his socials. Um, his Behance, his website's linked in the chat. Um, excited, excited, excited for tomorrow. Thank you so a lot much of maybe we're gonna go. We're gonna go split a split some lunch. <laughs> but thanks yeah. for joining us here on Adobe Live, and we will see you bright and early tomorrow. Thank you guys so see much. You. See you.